Today, we're looking into what is new from Stangberg for the iPad. Three things, or three things, depending on where you are in the world. First, we have Cubasis 3.8 with new features, especially guitar amps and bass amps. I use it with synthesizers, but you'll see. They also have two new soft synth, two uh, related to pianos. You have the Etude and the Verve. Etude is more of a traditional sounding piano with different control on it. And Verve is more of a fantasy piano, you know, with ambiences and reverb and more of a kind of an ambient texture to it. So two new piano sounds, but with different target. That's it. Let's just dive in. It's one of the few high-end DAW that exists on the iPad. There's a lot of beatbox and different softwares, but Cubasis has been there for a while, not to say from the start of the music production uh, reality on the iPad. And we are now at Cubasis 3.8. So what's new about 3.8? Of course, they didn't rebuild everything. But they went a little bit further and they made it even a better software. There's some stuff that is basically just fun to, to see. When you use it, you turn it like this, it actually changes the, the angle in which it works. So it can work in portrait or in landscape mode. If you connect it to your HDMI output and you connect it to a screen, the layout will adjust to the bigger screens. The extra space will be optimized better than on the iPad. So you can switch it on the other screen and then it still stay on one screen. It doesn't split on two screens. That would be the next step, by the way. But it stays on one screen and it uses proportionally the space in a better way than if it's just kind of trying to fit in the same thing. So. It's better optimized for the bigger screen of a HDMI output, if you will. Well, that's a cool thing. There's new stuff for, I would say, bassists and guitarists because there's um, bass amp, there's guitar amp, or the amp rack, and there's a tuner. So I'm just going to show, because I'm not a guitarist, but it's still going to do something interesting with it. So I'm going to start with uh, this little sound here. I'm going to go into the insert. I'm going to turn that off. If I play this... Okay, so I've got a, I took a little bass line. It's a MIDI synthesizer. This one is uh, actually the Bliss Omega. I like this one. So you have this sound coming out. So I'm going into bass amp. And then the bass amp, what you have is a, a list of different pieces of the hardware, pedals mostly, and an amp and a cabinet. So you basically can just add what you want. I'm gonna add, I don't know, a wah-wah. And you can control the wah pedal here. You can add, a, I don't know, a compressor if you want. You also have a different one, multi-band compressor. And then what you want, after that it goes into amp itself and choose a different type of amp so I want to choose this one so it doesn't sound the same and you can also change the cabinet itself where it's going to play and what cabinets it's going to play and the microphone which one the type of microphone and select the type of microphone there's a bunch of them every time it has to recreate differently the sound and you can decide which one you're going to hear, one or two, or a mix of the two, and where it's going to be positioned. Of course, maximizers, flanger, DI, and then Sir Octaver. Octaver, let's bring that in. Add more bass in this. And let's say we're just going to have also a distortion. Uh, overdrive here. Manito, what's this one here? And 
and you have these presets you can just load. As you saw, there's a lot of different plugins, pedals. There's the tuner. Uh, let's turn it on. Now, it's a virtual bass, but you understand you can tune your bass if you need to here. You have the same logic, but the options and the different pedals that you have here are different in the guitar mode. The amp rack. So in this case, I don't play guitar. So I went in and I did a solo lead. And on my solo lead, I have this sound here. Okay, I've got this one. That's the lead. I'm going to go through the amp rack. Again, you've got these different, they're not exactly the same. Effects, and pedals, tape delay, and all that stuff. You don't have the same. Sorry, oops. You don't have the same tweeter, but it's the same logic. So I'm going to use I don't know, the British custom, and then when you click here, you can actually. Reverb, we have EQ at the end. Again, before we could just, uh, let's say, try to duck and delay. You can just play with that, and again, you've got there's a lot of presets to play with. So you can just play with that and create the sound that you want for your guitar, for example. But what I also like to do is not limit myself to guitar with this. I'm actually going to take this and use it on something else, like a drum, for example. So I've got my drum sound here. I can go in. So that's noisy, but at the same time, of course, you can like. But there's something else that is cool. I mean, you can just take the gate here. play with this. The other thing that is new is two instruments. You have and play with some values here.
These are piano sounds, but with other sound that goes with it. So sometimes you've got violin at the pad at the back or some pads happening. You get delay, reverb, texture. So this really is a smooth ambient piano with a lot of movement in it if you want to. The other one is again an instrument. You go here, I'm gonna load another instrument. I'm gonna go for Etude. Etude is a piano, much more traditional. But still, you have control over the character. You want to be bright or more mellow. You have. You want some reverb, you want the panning, you want a shimmering reverb. You want an EQ control here. You want it to be flat or on compression. So it's not the same as the other one. This one is more a traditional sounding piano. With some You hear your basis three point eight. Check it out. Stay safe, make my music, and see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>